Hello, good evening, I'm Earl Gibbs and welcome to Speaking of Everything. And with me this evening for the first time on Speaking of Everything is Mr. Albert. So how are you doing, sir? I'm good, thank you, Mr. Gibbs. Well, it's good to have you in the program because you are a doctoral candidate at the University of Amsterdam. That's correct. And you're now working on your thesis for your... Um, for my PhD degree, right. yes. Now, uh, how long now since you've been working on your thesis? It's been uh, just about three years since I started, since I was accepted at the university as a candidate, yes. And it's, it's quite interesting because uh, one of your thesis has to do with tourism on St. Martin and Aruba. That's correct, yes. The, uh, the focus of my thesis is the uh, tourism-driven development model, if you like, yeah. that has been followed by uh, Aruba and St. Martin. Those two islands, because out of the six islands in the Caribbean that belong to the kingdom, kingdom of the Netherlands, those two have dedicated themselves so exclusively to tourism. Any reason why you decided to do this thesis on this uh, topic? Yes, uh, I'm, I'm a political scientist originally and an economist uh, second. And I was fascinated by the development of those two islands. Uh, coincidentally, I lived on both islands, living on St. Martin now for a decade almost. Okay. So, um, you know, it's, it's quite interesting because um, I've gone through your thesis and it's quite interesting in terms of the comparisons that you make between St. Martin and Aruba and also the various models. Yes, indeed. So, there are some similarities, some differences between the two. And the obvious similarity is the, the focus that both have on tourism, the exclusive focus almost. Both are very single pillar economies as opposed to the other four islands uh, that belong to the kingdom. And uh, if you look at the path that both uh, followed in terms of tourism development, then you see interesting similarities in, in an economic and in a social sense as well, more than you would expect mm. at first glance. Now, your thesis was also published in the UK recently, right? Yes, that's correct. So my, my thesis, to achieve my uh, PhD, I will have to write four articles that are published in uh, renowned international journals, scientific right. journals. So that's a pretty uh, grueling uh, process to get an article into one of those uh, uh, journals, so that takes a lot of time. So to do that I have to write four articles and this is the first one. Okay. And of course being the first one it sets the tone for the entirety of my uh, research. So everything else, the beginning of everything else of the other three is also in this article. Yeah. What surprised you most about this work you're doing now? Well, the, my, my most surprising finding for myself, and also a little bit the root of my research, is really the question whether in this obvious economic development, if you go and look if the, the wealth of both islands has actually increased per capita, so per member of the population, then in spite of the obvious growth that we see around us, we, the, the conclusion is that we didn't actually get any wealthier per person on average. That's quite interesting. Yeah, that's, that's ex actually a paradox because we all feel that wealth has increased. In, in spite of our problems, right. we still think that wealth has increased. But in reality, on average, that is uh, not actually the case. Over the, if you look back over the last 20, 25 years, since Tourism became dominant in both islands, both in Aruba after around status aparte. Yeah. And here also, of course, uh, actually a little earlier, back from the 70s and, and in the 80s. So in both cases, I looked at, at those past 25 years, making that timeline. And then you see that whenever e the economy has grown, yeah. the population actually has grown at the same pace. So the, the increase in wealth is actually averaged out over an, a population that grows to the same extent. So, uh, so in reality, uh, what you're saying, this didn't happen in St. Martin prior to, say, 1980 then? Yes, indeed. It, it did not happen prior to, uh, prior to 1980. Mm -hmm. the, um, the average wealth actually did increase. 
So it is when tourism became fully dominant, yes. when you can say when the single pillar economy started in earnest, and that goes for St. Martin as well as Aruba. Well, only in Aruba it happened more suddenly because of the closing of the Lago and the dedication. to. So from the time it became a single pillar economy, one a, a tourism economy, from that time onwards, the average wealth uh, did not increase anymore. What has been the response from other professors who have been reading your work? Well, obviously I have to report to the professor that um, supervises right. my, uh, my PhD and, and uh, her uh, reaction is very positive. Of course, she has been with this process every step of the way. And apparently it's also a bit unusual to actually publish uh, what, uh, what they call single authored articles. <laughs> so usually people do it you know, together with others. Uh -huh. I, I didn't give that uh, any thought, but apparently that is something special. So that, uh, that was an other, an other star for me. But then you work on your PhD, so most people tend to want to do it alone. Yeah, that, that is true, but still, even, even working on your PhD, yeah. you can still publish uh, together with others, actually. Yeah, they, people do that uh, all the time. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you the, other, the other person may or may not uh -huh. be a P, ha, have a PhD already or be yeah. you know, an, an, an uh, established researcher already. That is not unusual. So when you finish, then we will call you Dr. Alberts. Dr. Alberts, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> then I'm entitled to that, to the, to the doctor title, yeah, right. correct. You, you brought along um, tree graphs. Yeah. And uh, I, I want to at least maybe uh, show one of them because I think we go through all three of them just to show what they're like. And let me just take this down. So here you have spruce graphs. Tell us about, yeah. you have a gray and dark gray area. Yes. Well, this is uh, taking us back from 1980 onwards, like I said, uh, around the time that tourism became fully dominant in, in our economy. Right. So this shows the St. Martin population. The black, the dark base of the graph shows you the natural increase of the population. If there were, had been no immigration, right. it would have been the dark area alone. Okay. The gray area on top of that is the, what I call cumulative immigration, so that is what immigration added to our population from 1980 onwards all the way to the present day. So you see a big dip when uh, big dips when the hurricane struck, yeah. right? There's immigrants leaving the island again and then coming back after a few years. But here you can see, well, we, we know this already, of course, that yeah, slightly under half of the population is uh, goes back to immigration uh, from the last 25, uh, 30 years. But you can really see the two periods where it's rapidly yeah. Uh, growing. Yeah. So the 80s, when we had the boom that was driven by the, the timeshare uh, right. explosion, right? Yeah. We see the very steep line there from 1980 to 1990, the early 90s. Right. And you see the first hurricane. The, that little dip you yeah. see there, that's uh, absolutely Absolutely, yeah. And a tremendous dip there. It actually started a little earlier because mm. the economy wasn't going too well before the hurricane either. Okay. And then you get a steeper dip. And then the second one around, uh, so you get um, Hurricane Lewis. And then Lenny again at in the at the end of the 90s, close to 2000, and then it starts uh, booming again okay. until the present day. Can we move on to the next one? Yeah. Okay. So the the, the reason I have shown that now this is GDP. So economic growth is measured in right. terms of GDP, right? Uh, so if we in this graph we see the the two main branches of tourism, which is the stay over tourism, the bottom line, the dotted line. And that one it has been pretty stagnant since uh, the 1990s, not much. On St. Martin. Not, yes, on this is St. Martin only. Yes. Um, so not, not much increase there. Uh, as a matter of fact, a big dip again, of course, when Mullet Bay and, uh, and, and uh, Dawn Beach were destroyed. Right. And that recovered, but it didn't get any more, much more after that. Cruise tourism, however, is the, is the big pointy line uh, the top. at the top. And of course, we know that that one uh, took over after the, the hurricanes of the 90s. Yeah. Cruise tourism became dominant over stay over. Now, what you see here is that e economic growth has not been as fast 
as you might expect, based on that increase in cruise tourism and that more or less stagnant stay, stay over tourism. Well, what you want to see, of course, is that the economy grows faster right. than the amount of tourists, right? So we, we get more wealth, we squeeze more dollars out of the tourists. That doesn't happen. Okay. So that is the main conclusion, really. There's also another graph here. Yeah. Now, this is the, the bottom line, really. So here's, here you see two lines. The top one is Aruba. The, the bottom one that has a little gap in it is St. Martin. Now, this is the GDP, the per capita GDP. Why the gap? Oh, the gap is a statistical uh, glitch in, in, in St. Martin uh, statistics at oh, some point okay. in time. Um, they started counting in a different way at the, in that year. So it jumps a little. No, the, the thing is, the, you want this line to rise. You want this line to grow. And it doesn't. Yeah. So per capita GDP, the wealth that we create on a per person basis on this island, and also on Aruba, is just not growing. You, see, you even see it dipping at the end, especially in Aruba. Um, so and this is over the last more than 25 years. So what you, what you want to see here is that the average wealth goes up. Um, the reality is that it, it, it didn't. It's just distributed uh -huh. differently, but it doesn't grow on average. Then to, to the average person who's watching this program, they'll say, well, you know what? Um, I, I don't understand that because I see more people driving nice cars. Yes, they do. I see more homes being built. Yeah. So there are those people dr driving nice cars and, and, and building beautiful homes. Mm -hmm. But for every person who is able to do that, there is an, a number of immigrants at the bottom of the pyramid, so to speak. So while the top of the pyra pyramid goes up, the bottom becomes wider. So we have rich people, but also more and more people at the lower end of the social ladder added every year, and which is the which is big part of the immigration, of course. All right. Yeah. You've been living here now for ten years. Correct. You lived in Aruba for how many years? Eight years. Eight years. Yeah. So that's uh, quite some time. Yeah. And uh, you're focusing on Aruba and St. Martin tourism as yeah. part of your thesis. Correct. Now, in the graph, you show St. Martin in terms of. Um, stable tourism and uh, cruise tourism. Cruise tourism. Yeah. We are really one of the leaders in the Caribbean when it comes to cruise tourism. That is correct, yeah. yeah. So now, is, is it fair to conclude here too that uh, in terms of when you compare St. Martin to Aruba in your thesis that uh, uh, Aruba seems to have generate more income than St. Martin when it comes to stable tourism? Yes, you can say that, yes. Also, the proportion of stay over to, to cruise tourism is, is the other way around in Aruba. It's closer to, uh, to two-thirds contribution to the economy, one-third cruise tourism. Here it has become the other way around, especially since the 1990s, of course. Right. On St. Martin, the cruise tourism has become dominant over stay over. It, it, used, it didn't used to be that way. Right. Of course, but we very rapidly we, we passed the um, two million cruise tourism marks uh, a year ago. Now it dipped a, l a little again, but in ten years' time we went from one million to two million, uh, and and that is a very steep rise. While at the same time, stay over tourism has been had been damaged heavily by the the hurricanes. It took twelve years from. 1995 to about 2006, 2007, to get the same number of rooms back. So 12 years to get mm -hmm. back to the same level. And since 2006, 7, not many new hotel rooms were added. So that part of our tourism inventory has been a little stagnant, you might say. Yeah. You, you also As use opposed to Aruba. Yeah. Yeah. You also use uh, various and you compare various models yeah. on. Island tourism. Uh, correct. Right. On, on island development, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, there was one model that you said St. Martin is closer to. Yes, correct, correct. Yeah, that's a, uh, yeah. Uh, so St. Martin and Aruba, in, in a as being solely tourism focused islands, are not unique. They belong actually to a category that you can recognize in the world and yeah. in the Caribbean, which is called small island tourism economies, not surprisingly. Yeah. Um, but the interesting thing is research has been done, comparative research, to, uh, into all small island tourism economies in the world. 
and they are ranked in order of intensity of the commitment to tourism. Mm. And in that ranking of those 30 odd uh -huh. small island tourism economies, St. Martin is number one in intensity. So in, in number of rooms per square kilometer, in tourism dollars per, uh, per capita, per person uh, in the population, and other indicators as well. And Aruba is mostly uh, somewhere around number three. And, you know, in the top five are, are other countries like the U.S. Virgin Islands, uh, Bermuda. Uh, but you see that even within that category, we, you know, uh, the, the model followed by Aruba and St. Martin is pretty extreme. So extreme within oh. the club of extreme <laughs> <laughs> tourism <laughs> economies, yeah. Then if you, if you go back to St. Martin, because you make some reference also in, in your this is about before 1960 and so forth. Yeah. When you look at St. Martin and how it was developed, yeah. you know, it was developed where you had basically very little control and it was really fast. Yeah. And Correct. most Correct. experts yeah. will say, well, when your economy develops so fast with very little government control, in the long run, you tend to develop problems. Well, that is pretty much uh, what happened to St. Martin indeed. So the, the advantage of, of the laissez-faire attitude at first, which was very conducive to investment in the 1970s and 80s, that advantage turned it to a disadvantage. And once the island gets full and the economy and, the, and society gets more complicated, you actually do need a little bit of regulation and a bit of organization. So you can't keep on saying, mm. you know, let the chips fall where they may. So that works uh. at the beginning and then it takes off and then you have to <laughs> tighten the reins again. But that didn't happen so much at, uh, at first. So that, uh -huh. that got that indeed in, in some stages of our development, obviously, led to some tensions. Yeah. Because a lot of people will say, you know, if we didn't have a government with a there's a fair attitude mm -hmm. towards this economy. Yeah. Simran will never be where it is today. That is probably correct, but that is the first phase. And then society and the economy get more, com the island gets more crowded and you, right. you need more organization to fit it all on a small island and keep it organized and keep it running. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the laissez fair only takes you so far. No, you, in your graph, and you mentioned you showed earlier about uh, immigration. Yeah. Tourism, if you look at tourism all over, even if you look at Las Vegas, there's yeah. so many people going in there that work. So it yeah. seems like the, the, what keeps tourism really moving is a lot of immigrants. Obviously, yeah. The, 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 the model, in the, that goes for Aruba as well as St. Martin, but more extremely for St. Martin. The, the whole business of tourism, of course, can only run by virtue of a lot of labor. And obviously, St. Martin didn't have that labor itself, so it had to come from the wider Caribbean. So it, it's not a question of going for tourism and choosing whether you have immigration or not. It's not a choice. You need that to, to populate your, your hotels and, and your shops and, and, and everything. There was also a model that where you mentioned to that, that uh, they will adopt a policy where immigrants could not stay. They would just come for a particular time and then go. Yes. Well, that, that has been tried in Aruba and it's also been tried in, 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 in the Netherlands and Tilly's situation when St. Martin was still part of that. But it never really turns out that way. So at first, when, when the first immigration waves came, the idea was that people would come for the high season and then go back again and yeah. then come back for the season, etc. Be seasonal migrants. That has been true to a certain extent, but people tend to stay in between and also tend to come back. And after the third season, they, uh, they stick around. So it's a, it's a bit of an illusion to think that you can have temporary immigration mm -hmm. for a permanent tourism model that that just doesn't happen okay. yeah. uh, your work is is also very technical and I try and I said to you on the phone before we started that we try to keep it as simple as possible because I want my audience to understand what you're doing what do you think some modern needs to understand about this industry that is so we, we have a single pillar economy is tourism that's all we got yeah 
Yeah. So what I don't argue is that the focus on tourism makes us vulnerable in an economic sense. So it's not about the single pillar economy being good or bad. It's about how you shape that one pillar. And, and actually, in my research, um, I found out that comparing to other islands, other islands who follow the same path, the, sm yeah. the same small island tourism economy path, it doesn't make them specifically vulnerable. It doesn't make them worse off either. Yeah. But it is what you do with the tourism sector. So the, the key is in value added and the key is in quality. So, so then wha wha so de de yeah. developing indeed, trying to develop a higher quality, higher value added uh, products uh, that can you can do that in, in different ways. That's of, of, of course the, the technical side of tourism. What kind of tourists you attract, what kind of products you offer them about markets and, 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 and products and, and, and stay over versus cruise and, and all of those things. Mm -hmm. But the key is in upgrading the facilities, upgrading the products on the one hand, the industry itself, the, the yeah. hardware, so to speak, and of course the, the product in the sense of the, the experience that tourists get when they get here and the image of that. And on the other hand, of the spectrum, the human resources. So the, the people who work in tourism, that is really the key to make the other thing possible. So a higher quality workforce, higher quality investment leads to, and, and, and higher quality products and marketing. That would take us to a higher level of uh -huh. per capita GDP, for instance. So, so what, what is your conclusion since you've compared two islands, Aruba and Simran? Yeah. Well, you can see that from the graph that we showed before also that Aruba has a, been a little bit more successful along those paths. You, you have also seen that commitment has been voiced in Aruba as well as St. Martin in, in, in words and in, in intentions to do that thing where you upgrade the quality and where you try to get more value added out of each room or each visitor or each cruise. Uh, passenger. So the commitment is there, the intention is there, it, it just doesn't always pan out that way. So the, the dedication to actually go from the commitment and the intention to the, to the reality uh -huh. hasn't always worked out. In Aruba a little more than St. Martin because you can see from the numbers that Aruba has a slightly higher GDP per capita than, than we have. But again, the, um, the similarity is that both Aruba and St. Martin, each on at their own level, are a little stagnant in uh, per capita GDP, so stagnant in that value added, stagnant in, in the quality that they, they offer. We, we don't succeed in each year getting a little more dollars out of each tourist or a little more dollars out of each room night or a little more dollars out of each each cruise tourist. It doesn't happen. This seems like, as you gravitate more towards mass tourism, you tend to get a diminishing return. So you're getting more visitors, spending less money because you, you're getting more people with lower income traveling abroad in, in a mass tourism market. It has to do with uh, our, our turn towards mass tourism. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not as simple as that always. And more tourists doesn't, by definition, mean a, a, a lower category of tourists. It is, of course, it is what happened in practice to us. Yeah, so the average tourist uh, didn't become a tourist of a higher and higher quality. Actually, you know, after the Mullet Bay area, you might argue that it, it dipped somewhat and then it, re it recovered, but we never got to a really higher level. Right. So um, you have it? how many more years do you have before <laughs> we... <laughs> well, I hope to conclude this project in, in two more years. That is the optimistic scenario. It would uh -huh. probably take a little longer <laughs> still. Yeah. Yeah, but I hope we can have you back sometime again, maybe on the live show, because there's so much to speak about, and we didn't even touch 5% of what you're doing. Well, I would be happy to have another opportunity to come back and uh, also address uh, the audience. Well, I want to thank you for coming in now, Mr. Albert, and be my guest this evening, and uh, wish you much success on your 
journey towards your PhD. Thank you very much, Mr. Gibbs, and it was a pleasure. Thank you. And that's it for now. I'll see you next time right here on uh, Speaking of Everything. Until then, good night. Take care. Bye.